Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May the peace and blessings of Allah, of God, be upon you all. A very quick note for everybody. Allah says in the Quran, Afala yatadabburuna al Quran. Do they not reflect upon the Quran or are there locks on their hearts? If we reflect upon the verse that tells us to reflect upon the Quran, we may conclude that the more we contemplate, meditate and discover and analyze and search for the gems in the Quranic verses, the more our hearts will become unlocked to receive the mercy, guidance and divine love. Because brothers and sisters and friends, the Quran is an ocean and we must do tadabbur, reflection and pondering upon this book as Allah tells us. And the more we ponder, we take an ayah, we take a verse and we find out what does it mean for me? What does Allah want me to do concerning this verse? How does it affect my spiritual and social DNA? How am I supposed to act and live and behave? How am I supposed to be? Meaning, what kind of state should I be in? So I want to encourage all the brothers and sisters and friends to really engage with the Quran from this perspective because the Quran wants to be engaged with. Because the Quran was sent down for the whole of humanity and human beings are thinking human beings. So Allah, the divine reality, the Lord of everything that exists is telling us, engage with His word, with His eternal word. And I believe if we engage with it and we ponder upon it, we can really find solutions for all of life, but particularly our spiritual life and for our moral and ethical lives. And I just want to give you an example. I want you to go to chapter 12 of the Qur'an. It has become my favorite chapter. But this is the beauty of the Qur'an. Every time you understand a chapter, that becomes your favorite chapter. So, I've done some work concerning the 12th chapter on the Qur'an. And I find it so fascinating. Even Allah, God says, is the greatest story. So in this greatest story, I want you to read this story and find out why did Yaqub, Jacob, Yaqub alayhi salam, why was he suffering and in distress? Well, we know he was suffering and in distress because Yusuf, his beloved son, alayhi salam, Joseph, upon whom be peace, bin Yamin, his other little son, was also missing. And he was in distress where he says in the chapter 12, verse 86, I only complain of my suffering and grief to Allah. And I know from Allah that which you do not know. So from the perspective of a state of being, so say we're depressed sometimes in life and we're really upset or we don't know where we're going and we have this kind of existential crisis. Who are we? Whose are we? What are we? Why are we? All these questions we can't really answer properly. We haven't really reflected upon those questions properly because we all need reminders. So we can be in a state of suffering and grief. So Yusuf alayhi salam, rather Yaqub alayhi salam, the father of Yusuf alayhi salam and Binyamin, He's saying he's suffering and, he, and he's in grief. But look at his solution or look what he does. And he says, I only complain of my suffering and grief to Allah. That's number one. When we go to the next verse, verse 87, he now advises his sons, because he had another 10 sons, to go and find out about Joseph and Binyamin, his brother. And look what Yaqub alayhi salam says. He says, and despair not. Of the life-giving mercy, Rawhillah, the life-giving mercy of God of Allah. For indeed, the one who despairs of the life-giving mercy of God is the one who actively rejects the truth. So there are some lessons here. It's teaching us how to deal with grief and distress and depression. Because Yaqub alayhi salam, Jacob upon whom be peace. He wasn't the one in genuine distress and grief because he loved Joseph so much. He loved Benjamin so much and he was really, really, really distressed. But look what he does. He says, I complain only to Allah. So that's the first point of call when you're distressed and you're in grief. Complain to Allah. The second piece of advice, which is quite significant, is in the advice he gives to his sons. And he says, and despair not of the life-giving mercy of Allah. For whoever despairs of his mercy is the one who is in an active state of disbelief, who rejects the truth. So it means the one who is in grief and distress and depressed, a solution out of this grief and depression is to sincerely advise others and remind others 
of the mercy of Allah. Yaqub was the one in distress and grief. But he advised his son sincerely and he told them about Allah's mercy, his compassion, his love. So the way to get out of this grief and distress is actually to do that. Advise others sincerely and remind them of the mercy of Allah. And it's no wonder many of the counsellors or psychotherapists, they were actually depressed and they got into the job just to help themselves because advising others actually helps you. So keep on reflecting upon the Quran, brothers and sisters. And if you do feel a bit distressed, a bit in grief, rely on Allah, refer to Allah, complain to Allah alone because He's the only one who can change the situation. Number two, sincerely advise others. Number three, remind others sincerely of the life-giving mercy of your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.